In this video, we're going to explore the late Republic. And what I want to offer today is an overview of the period. And in fact, what we mean when we talk about a period in history. You might have heard of the term periodization, and that's a term that refers to how historians like to break up history into more digestible chunks or periods. This is a tool of historical analysis. It's not necessarily, obviously, how the Romans, for example, experienced history themselves, but it helps us understand what's happening over the course of Roman history and, in this instance, the Roman Republic. And the period that you're currently studying is often referred to as the late Roman Republic. But what does that actually mean? When and what is the late Roman Republic? This is usually a period that refers to the mid-2nd century BC until the end of the 1st century BC. So in order to help us understand what and when the late Roman Republic was, I'd like us to actually start by thinking about its end, which might seem counterintuitive. But this helps us understand as historians what happened in the period, where is it moving towards? Because the late Republic is often characterised by scholarship as a period of crisis, of upheaval, of decline. And scholars characterise this whole period from the 2nd century BC to the 1st century AD as one of crisis, this movement from stability to collapse. So by thinking about the end, it helps us as historians think about what questions we want to ask of the material and the period. And a historian who, who deals with the issues of periodization quite nicely and succinctly is a modern scholar called Harriet Flower. And I'd like just to provide you with a quote from her work called Roman Republics. Our whole picture of what Republican politics in Rome consists of is shaped by when and how we think it came to an end. By our sense of its failure, whether deserved or tragic, overdue or sudden and unexpected, its ending contributes to a definition of its essential characteristics as they had evolved over so many generations. The parameters we choose in our definition of Republican failure inevitably determine which actors take part in the drama and under which varied historical conditions. The end of the Republic has cast a long shadow over what came before and has encouraged various theological ways of talking about earlier Roman politics. Harriet Flower's work rejects the idea of one single monumental Republic. And scholars have traditionally thought there is an early, a mid and a late Republic. She, however, breaks it up into actually six Republics. Now, her decisions about when these six Republics occurred um, are not necessarily arbitrary, but they are based on her own historical analysis about which points in history she thinks are most important. Um, so it's not to say that you should necessarily follow her periodization, but what it illustrates is the importance of historical analysis and how we view the period. What points in history do we think are the most important in trying to define a period and the questions we ask of it? However, whilst Flowers' Six Republics is a useful historical tool of analysis, it doesn't necessarily get at the way the Romans themselves viewed the Republic. Indeed, did they view it as a series of republics or one continuous monolithic republic? Did they see a point at which things started to decline? This is where we can turn to our sources and we get two quite similar but slightly different viewpoints from two historians. The Roman historian Sallust, who is writing during the triumphal period, so in the 30s BC, which is within the period you're studying, and a later Roman writer called Appian, who wrote under the empire. And Sallust saw the fall of Carthage in 146 BC as a turning point, at a point at which Rome turns in on itself and it has no external rivals with which to contend. And I'd just like to read his passage about this. For before the destruction of Carthage, the people and the Senate of Rome together governed the Republic peacefully and with moderation. There was no strife amongst the citizens, either for glory or for power. Fear of the enemy preserved the good morals of the state. So for Sallust, the loss of a strong external opponent 
meant that the Romans lost their strong moral character and began to fight and compete amongst themselves for power. And this, for him, was the decline. And often, obviously, scholars see the beginning of the late Republic with the fall of Carthage. For Appian, however, the internal degradation of the Republic begins a few years later, but still within the same period. For Appian, it comes in 133 BC with the tribune Tiberius Gracchus. And I'd like now to read the extract from his history. The sword was never carried in the assembly, and there was no civil butchery until Tiberius Gracchus, while serving as tribune and bringing forward new laws, was the first to fall a victim to internal commotion, and with him many others, who were crowded together at the capital round the temple, were also slain. Sedition did not end with this abominable deed. So what we see from both Sallust as a late Republican author and Appian, an imperial author, is that there is some sort of consensus as to the point in time at which the Roman Republic starts to decline, or at least turn in on itself, as opposed to being a strong external power in the Mediterranean. And this is the period of the late Republic beginning in the second century BC, the period that you're studying, a period defined by crisis and breakdown.